So Notion has given us a little bit of a tease of what 2025 is going to look like. And today I wanted to unpack them all for you as somebody who may be following Notion. So welcome, my name is Francesco and welcome to Toolfinder. If you're brand new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So do hit subscribe. And we've also got a site that you might not know about called toolfinder.co. It's a powerful for way to not just find tools, but integrations and much more. So you can find tools that will complement Notion if they haven't built them already. And if you're not joining the Notion newsletter, then that's the final thing to do. So Notion have had a good start to the year. They introduced pretty much off the mark something called Notion Faces, which if you haven't tried yet, allows you to create an illustration in the same style as Notion's designer to your own face, which is pretty cool. They even roped in Snoop Dogg to release his, which is a crazy thing. The weirdest thing about that is that I got more messages from people saying they didn't realize Snoop Dogg had a LinkedIn then they were using that. They were more surprised by the LinkedIn thing, which is pretty crazy. But Notion has also given us a tease of what's on the horizon with Notion Calendar, Mail, and more. And I wanted to start unwrapping them. So the first of those is Notion Calendar. Now, for those who don't know, you can download a separate app, which is the calendar experience, which you can plug in with Google Calendar. Well, this is getting better this year. Inside of this new Notion Calendar, they're introducing a meeting assistant. And apparently millions of people are already using Notion Calendar. So this could be a great one. So when a meeting starts, a listening device or listening uh, AI comes into play in the background, much like you've seen with many of the other AI note-taking softwares in the background. And what it will do is it will start to compile the transcript of the meeting, turning those into summarized notes for you and still allowing you to take notes in the background, which means you can toggle away that listening and then be able to type your notes. And a little bit like another app that's on the market called Granola AI, it will basically create a recap, merging them with your notes, which is a great addition. You can also, something they didn't sort of flag, but I saw in the, the gener generation of the demonstration, was that you can draft that as an email. So it could be a good way to send out meeting notes to those who weren't attending. Now, they will also basically start to analyze the meetings you've been in and start uh, preparing agendas for meetings based on previous meetings which is an incredibly useful feature. So this is a great example of why Notion having separate apps is starting to make much more sense in 2025. So for those who don't know, Notion Mail is coming in 2025. They have a wait list at the moment, which I'll include below if you're in interested in signing up. But Notion Mail essentially is introducing a newer feature called Autopilot, which will allow you to generatively produce an email organizer based on a few different prompts. For example, you could say organize newsletters with this tag or organize mentions of the Yankees with this, etc., etc. And this autopilot feature will start to present that information in a much more organized fashion. Now for email, this can be a massive game changer and you can connect or, or at least I think it will be connected with Gmail. Yet I've not fully played with it yet. But also they are making the integration between Notion Calendar and Notion Mail much better. And they're not just doing this through a scheduling link, but they are allowing it to be in a dynamic scheduling link, allowing you to find a specific time on a micro calendar that will be inside of your Notion Mail. This is incredibly helpful, especially when finding meetings. And it's another good example of how those two integrations can work very well together. And it's going to be rolling out across this year as Notion Mail introduce themselves, which is great news. Before we move on, make sure to join our new apps newsletter, a brand new newsletter where I send you three apps every week. Check it out below. So another big bit of news, which I believe to be coming in 2025, it's pretty obvious to be honest, but it's coming probably, highly likely, is a Notion Slack competitor. Now in the market, there is not much space, or there are a few applications playing in the space, like basically Slacks, but more relaxed Slack channels that will help you to organize and communicate with your team. Well, there was a site called Camp Site, which did very well in asynchronous communication. Well, the two founders, Ryan and Brian, which I think is a pretty crazy name combination already, have decided to join Notion. Now, they have open source Camp Site, so obviously the current version of it is available on open source. However, 
the actual access that that gives Notion to potentially developing a Slack competitor could be pretty dramatic. Now, obviously that's on the cards. It makes total sense to have a Slack competitor because so many people use Notion and Teams would be able to chat and be able to connect with their Notion data. And it could be incredibly helpful. So I do believe nearer the later part of this year, June, between June and September is my prediction for when Slack will release their Notion competitor. Notion released their Slack competitor. <laughs> so finally, there are a few things that you may know already. Offline mode is set to come in 2025, but they're also reopening the API team that has uh, basically restarted according to a tweet from Akshay Kathari, which is uh, mentioned on Twitter, of course, or X. Now, I do think this opens up one final hole or two final holes to what Notion could introduce next as a separate application. And the first of those is a whiteboard collaboration software. I believe that's one missing piece of the puzzle that they could try and fill, being more of a combination between Miro and other apps that are doing this visual canvas representation like Milano. And the company I think that they could acquire to do this uh, probably is Affine Pro. Um, it's probably the best suited example of it and the missing piece, mainly because in Affine Pro, for those who don't know, you can turn a document into a whiteboard pretty instantaneously. And for a lot of people, I think that could be the switch on for them just to be able to start a whiteboard straight away. And they live separate, which is, I think, the most synced way to do that. And finally, task management. What an opportunity for Notion to go into task management. And what a good thing it could do because task management in Notion is a amalgamation of databases, which for a lot of users, that could be pretty awful. So I can imagine task management being a really good separate application, especially if you combine it with time blocking and your calendar at the same time. It could truly be an interesting one. And if you combine the abilities of Notion Mail, where you could use a chatbot to organize things based on different attributes and what's in your Notion account, again, an incredibly valuable tool. So that was my predictions for 2025 with Notion. Please do check out any links that are below. And if you're interested in finding complimentary tools that, aren't that Notion haven't built yet, jump over to toolfinder.co. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you in a future video. Feel free to comment below with your thoughts and I look forward to reading them. Cheerio for now.